All right, I'm back in the studio and with me are two MacBook Pro 14s with M5s. Now I say two of them because I wanted to see whether getting more memory actually makes a difference. This one has 24 gigs and this one has 16. And I also wanted to see if there was a difference between the 512 gig drive and the one terabyte. Look, when Apple announces new products, I'm always so frustrated by people just rushing out videos and really overhyping them. Overall, if you were planning to buy an M4 MacBook Pro, this is a good update to an already great laptop a bit more performance and a bit more battery life, but realistically, it is incremental and a very lazy update from Apple. There's no Wi-Fi 7, there's no Thunderbolt 5, and Apple just haven't addressed any of the long-standing issues. The notch is still large and the front edge is sharp, and it's uncomfortable to use if you're using it on a plane's tray table like I often do. If you're wondering if it's now fast enough to make the M4 Pro MacBook Pros irrelevant, it isn't. Those processes are much faster. If you're comparing one of these to a Windows laptop at this price point, Apple still does very well for what they've always done well in. It's a laptop you buy for home, office or student use, and you just don't have anything to worry about. It all works really well and it's very premium. It's great for programmers and creators, but it's still terrible for gamers. If you're wondering whether you need more than 16 gig of memory, most people don't and just shouldn't overspend on Apple's expensive upgrades. It's really only video editors doing very complex projects, 3D modelers and some coders who need that. If that is you, you probably should buy an M4 Pro version anyway. It already comes with more memory and due to sales, it's often found around the same price. Check out our website, bestlaptop.deals. It is the hub for laptop buying and we scan prices right across retailers. We even show you the price history so you you can tell if you're actually getting a real deal. With that said, let's get into the details, but first, a quick word from our sponsor Ugreen, who helped us buy all these Macs. Ugreen are quickly becoming one of the best backup solutions in the entire NAS space. If you don't know what a NAS is, it's kind of like cloud storage, but it keeps your data locally, safely on your own hard drives on your own network. This means you don't have to pay monthly fees, and it's much faster to access your files. They've just added their DH2300 to their lineup. It can fit two hard drives for up to 60 terabytes of storage. Ugreen have told us it's around 20 million pictures, 40,000 movies, or 62 million files. It's a lot. At Ugreen, they're committed to supporting third-party hard drives. All the major ones work. If you're an iPhone user, you can set it to automatically back up your album. It even has this cool tap to connect feature. If you're a beginner, don't worry. It's smooth and easy to set up. Check the link in the description for 20% off. Now back to the video. We're going to start with CPU performance. The M5 chip has the same number of CPU cores as the M4 chip at 10. It also has the same mix of cores, 4 performance cores and 6 efficient. We're going to start with Cinebench. It's a really good benchmark to test the CPU's max performance. Here you can see that there is an incremental jump in single core. It's 15% faster than the M4 version and 18% faster in multi-core. However, it can't catch the higher end M4 Pro chips. Even the less powerful 12 core one, it still beats the M5 by a substantial 24%. Now, when it comes to Windows laptops in single core, this MacBook, it crushes them. However, in multi-core, it's actually neck and neck with Intel's Arrow Lake H, the Core Ultra 9, and it performs between AMD's Ryzen 9 365 and their HX 370. The M5, it does substantially beat out less powerful chips though, like the Ultra 7, the Ryzen 7, and Qualcomm's X Elite. By the way, there is a faster X Elite processor than the one in the Slim 7X that we're showing you, but the Slim 7X, guys, it was our best performing Qualcomm laptop, including ones with that more powerful processor. So that's why we're showing you it here. Switching to Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks that you may actually be doing on your laptop, like unzipping a file, it's a similar story. This time though, the M5, it pulls a little further ahead of Windows competitors. Now, these benchmarks on the surface are just far from the full picture, so let's dive in a little deeper. We ran Cinebench on a loop for 10 minutes. That's to see what's really going on. The M5 chip, it initially draws 32 watts, but averages only 26. This indicates that its single fan cooling solution just can't keep the chip cool enough under a sustained workload. The laptop, it does have to throttle its performance a little. What's interesting is that the M5 chip is fed a little more power than the M4 version. That extra power actually equates to its extra performance. You can see this when we switch over to our scatter plot. The y-axis is our Cinebench score and the x is our power draw. The M5 chip, it actually falls along the exact same curve as the existing M4 series, i.e. there is no efficiency gain. The M5 chip, it just performs better in CPU tasks because it's fed more power. 
Now, this isn't surprising. It's still built on TSMC's 3 nanometers. Apple are saying that this is a third generation 3 nanometer. But guys, to me, it just sounds like Intel's 14 nanometer plus 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 thing that Intel were doing for a number of years when they were delivering very little improvements. Speaking of Intel and other Windows CPU manufacturers, the M5 chip is still far more efficient than those. Intel's Cortra 9, it needs to draw around 40 watts more to perform like Apple's M5. Now, feeding more power to the M5 chip, it leads to worse thermals, as I mentioned. The single fan cooling solution hasn't changed. Unfortunately, we couldn't actually access the sensor to measure the CPU temperatures. It's probably because, guys, this is a brand new CPU and software hasn't been updated yet. But we were able to measure the temperatures you'd actually feel. We're talking on the keyboard deck and the underside. Under full load, this M5 MacBook Pro, it gets a lot hotter than the M4 MacBook Pro that came before it. In fact, it feels almost as warm as the MacBook Pro with the higher end M4 Pro chip. Now, you may wonder why that laptop doesn't feel hotter, given that the M4 Pro chip is fed a lot more power than this base M5 version. That's because the M4 Pro and Max MacBook Pros, they actually have a more robust cooling solution. They use two fans. By the way, the heat you feel under load is a test where a Windows laptop it actually comes out on top, the Asus TUF A14. That's a 14-inch gaming laptop. When we switch to fan noise, you may see the TUF's extremely loud fans and think that's why it's so cool. Guys, this is just how we do our tests, where we run each laptop on their highest performance modes. If you drop the TUF down, a performance mode that is, it performs similar, yet its fan noise is much less for a minor increase in keyboard deck temperature. The TUF, it just has a really good cooling solution. Now, back on the new M5 MacBook Pro. It has the same max fan noise as the prior M4 model. Both of them are louder than a MacBook Pro with a Pro chip. That is once again due to its single fan cooling solution. It has to spin that fan faster than one with two fans would. Guys, having to say MacBook Pro and then the chip is called Pro, it is so frigging confusing. I don't know how you guys understand it. The people at these corporates who name these products, honestly, they just need to be fired. It is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, raw CPU performance, it isn't the only thing that these new M5 chips have going for them. There is apparently faster GPU cores, better ray tracing, and a neural engine. There's also increased memory bandwidth. The memory speeds were increased from 120 gigabytes per second to 153. There's still a big gap to the 273 of the M4 Pro chip. Apple does use unified memory, which is shared by the CPU and GPU. This is great for the CPU, as GPUs require faster memory than what CPUs are normally given. So, the memory here, it significantly outperforms memory that Windows CPUs have access to. If you want to compare them, 2.6 of DDR5-8000 memory is only 90GB per second of memory bandwidth. However, when it comes to the GPU, NVIDIA's GPUs have much faster memory speeds. Their lowest RTX 5050 has 384 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Let's talk about storage. We're pleased to see faster SSDs in this new M5 model. They are a little faster than any laptop we've tested. We didn't notice a difference in speeds between the 512 and the one terabyte models, at least not within a margin of error. What we did notice is that these laptops, they don't always get those speeds. More often than not, they perform a little worse than the speeds we're showing you on screen. This is probably due to the storage drives just overheating. Fast SSDs, they get hot, and there's nothing here to really cool these down. Anyway, enough with these synthetic tests. Let's see how this all plays out in actual real-world applications. We're going to start with Premiere Pro because that's what we actually use here to make our videos. Firstly, here's the standard Puget benchmark that a lot of reviewers are showing you. Here we see a huge leap forward for the M5 version, 65% faster than the M4 MacBook Pro. It's so fast, it almost ties with the more expensive MacBook Pro with the highest-end M4 Pro chip. You can also see that in this benchmark, having more memory, it doesn't make a difference. Our 24 gig model and our 16 gig model, they perform the same. If you truly want the best video editing experience though for this kind of money, you could buy a Windows laptop with a dedicated GPU that will just perform better. Anyway, the issue with showing you this Puget benchmark and only it is it's absolutely misleading, at least for our videos. Let me show you what I mean. Normally, rendering a video is the most intensive task that you'll be doing as an editor. When we exported one of our recent videos on each of these laptops, you can see that the MacBook Pro with the highest in M4 Pro chip, guys, it is much faster than this new M5 version. The M5 version, it does beat out the older M3 Pro version though, which is nice to see. But this is a really big difference between what we showed you in Puget's benchmark and in the real world. 
Also, check out the TUF A14, it is dead last year. What happened? Why did it do so well in the Puget Benchmark? What we've found is that in the real world, Premiere Pro, it just works better on Intel CPUs than AMDs, which is what the TUF has. Now, our next real world test is a large warp stabilization. This is a very common effect that's also very intensive. Here you can see once again that the highest end M4 Pro chip beats out the M5 by a good margin. Unfortunately, we don't have our older M4 MacBook Pro anymore, which is why it's not on our graph. In general, if you don't see certain laptops on our graphs, that's why it's a newer test and we no longer have that laptop. So here's a couple of learnings for Premiere Pro video editors. One, don't rely on Puget's benchmark. Two, don't overspec your laptop. Apple's upgrades, they are expensive, and you just may not need them. In our case, moving up to 24 gigs, it made very little difference, and our videos, they aren't simple. As a video editor, you likely only need more memory if you're working with, say, high bitrate footage like 10-bit, or your videos are even more complex than ours. I do plan to test this actually further in our best laptop for video editors. That's the amount of memory that video editors really need. I'm already working on that, so get subscribed with the notification bell on because I should have the video out in a couple of weeks. What I do want to say though about video editing is this. I think there is a big issue with people just overspecking their laptops with more memory that they just don't need. If you look at Activity Monitor and you see yellow on the memory tab, it doesn't mean you need more memory. It's more of a nice to have, you should be thinking about more memory. Red is really when you need more memory. Now, I'm not saying Apple shouldn't just give you more memory at this price point. Obviously they should. But don't give them more of your hard-earned cash if you just don't have to. These upgrades are super expensive, and that money you could be putting it towards upgrading your whole laptop sooner. All right, we don't use DaVinci Resolve, so unfortunately the best I can show you is another Puget test. Here you can see that the M5 is once again a significant amount faster than the M4. It is faster than the higher end M3 Pro and the higher end M2 Pro MacBook Pros, but it is nowhere near as fast as the M4 Pro. Now let's talk about 3D rendering. Here we tried Blender with a render that actually uses ray tracing. The M5 did very well. You can see that in this specific test, having more memory, it does indeed help. Our 24 gig M5 did better than our 16 gig one. Nvidia's laptops though, they still dominate here. And keep in mind, there are far more powerful Nvidia laptops than the ones that we're showing you. When you see the Transcend perform poorly with its Nvidia RTX 5070, we believe that is due to how little power that HP is feeding that laptop's GPU. It's 75 watts, way less than the max allowable 115. This new MacBook, it comes with a 70 watt charger. This is actually less than the 75 watts that HP is feeding their GPU alone. We aren't even factoring in the power fed to the Transcend CPU or its other components. As you can see, the M5 beats the Transcend. So Apple's GPU, it appears to also be extremely power efficient, just like their CPU. All right, let's now talk gaming. In Steel Nomad, you can see that the M5 chip is way behind the M4 Pro chip and significantly behind Windows laptops with a dedicated NVIDIA GPU. It's not even close. In Cyberpunk, it pretty much echoes what we saw in Steel Nomad. Even when you try turning on frame gen, it does help, but it's still not a competitive gaming experience. And keep in mind, every gaming laptop that we're showing you here they can be bought for around the same price as the MacBook Pro with M5, especially when you factor in getting the same amount of memory and storage. Now, just a little note on that, if you are considering a 16 gig of memory MacBook for gaming, please be a little bit careful of something. Because the memory is unified, the GPU will consume a good amount of that memory. That's not the case on a Windows gaming laptop where the dedicated GPU has its own VRAM. Anyway, after Steel Nomad and Cyberpunk, we wanted to try Battlefield 6. Well, there's no Mac version available. Then we wanted to try Monster Hunter Wilds. Also no Mac version available. Finally, Borderlands 4. You guessed it, no Mac version available. I think you guys get what I'm trying to say here. If you want to run Cyberpunk from five years ago, sure, you can do that, and you can even get horrible frame rates. Moral of the story, if you're a gamer, just don't buy a Mac. To test AI, we tried the wolf goat cabbage test on a 14 billion parameter model using the same seed for each laptop. The M5's tokens per second were 40% slower than the M4 Pros, and Nvidia just stole the show. Unfortunately, this is another test where we no longer have that older M4 model to compare this newer one to. Now that we're a bit bigger as a company, in 2026, we're going to try to keep all major laptops in. Sierra, she literally sighed when I said that as we have so many laptops. But I think it's really important, especially if we want to be the best laptop reviewers out there, and we want to. 
Now, before we move on, I do want to specifically talk about my people, programmers. As someone with two computer science degrees and over a decade of professional experience, I hate programming benchmarks. If you know coding, you'll know that performance, it really depends entirely on what you're actually coding, what language you're coding it in, and what your application does. Because a lot of slowdowns are running test cases, not compiling, just doing, say, a Mozilla Firefox compile, it's not a great indicator. What I will say is this, I am confident that the processor in this laptop is plenty powerful for most coders, but you probably want more than 16 gig of memory. 16 gig is fine for students or those doing basic web dev, but if you're doing anything more intensive or you're working with things that just chew up a ton of memory like virtual machines, I definitely advise you go for at least 24 gig, if not more. And as I already said, realistically, just step up to the M4 Pro version, it comes with more memory and it performs better anyway. Finally, battery life. As per usual with Apple's laptops, performance doesn't drop when they are unplugged. Yay, many Windows laptops, unfortunately, they still struggle with this. In terms of battery life, the new M5 lasts the longest in our office productivity test. This is really good. We feel, by the way, that this is a more realistic use case than video playback. We're only showing you video playback because that's the test we ran on our older laptops. Please note that your battery life will probably vary from ours. In fact, it'll probably be lower. Many people, they actually are running a lot more applications on their laptop than what we do in these test cases, and we also lower our brightness to 200 nits. Many people like me, they don't lower their brightness that much, so you'll probably get less battery life than what I'm showing you here. Next year, I am planning on improving here by moving our test to a more realistic 300 nits. Now, I was gonna show you the webcams, but they're unchanged this year. All right, so that was a lot. The M5 MacBook Pro 14, it is a nice step forward from the older M4 version, but it's very incremental. Overall, the MacBook Pro with M5, it does continue to be a very premium, all-round laptop with fantastic performance and exceptional battery life. But there are many cases where you should get an M4 Pro, and there are many cases where you should get a Windows laptop instead. Overall, if you are shopping for a laptop, the place to go is, of course, bestlaptop.deals. It literally is the hub for laptop buying, and we're constantly improving it. Over there, we show you top laptops for different types of use cases. We show you the pros and cons of each one, so you don't have to watch long YouTube videos with a guy like this. And of course, we track prices right across retailers to show you the best deals. And if that's not enough, and you want personalized advice, just drop your question in our community. If we do have time to get to it, we certainly will. Well, that's all I got for you. We have a huge amount of buying guides coming up. If you're not already subscribed and you're still here, what are you doing? Get subscribed, click that notification bell. Until next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.